I'd like you to welcome on stage Mr. Robert Delo uh, from Pionix. Uh, he's a technology evangelist. He's been 11 years in electromobility. He's led the development of OCPP and OCPI for six and seven years with Pionix. And since last year, he's been building the open source community around the project Everest. Um, please, um, uh, let's welcome um, Robert on end-to-end -end security and EV charging. Thank you. Hey, welcome everybody. Um, so, my presentation will uh, explain a bit how we do uh, certificate handling and security within Everest, uh, and how the library that we've built to handle those all those certificates can also be used outside, outside Everest. Um, so, if you do anything with charging station, you need a way to handle all the certificates. Um, please have a look because it can be really interesting also for you. Does everybody know what Everest is? Do I do a new, new quick recap to explain? Everest in a nutshell, um, it's a full charging station software stack. So it's fully open source, so if you want to build a charging station that does uh, either a, uh, a home charger or up to a full high power DC multi-satellite charging station, uh, that's all possible with Everest. It's all open source. Um, it's Owned by, it's a Linux Foundation project. Um, Pionix, the, so the company I work for, initiated it. Um, it's Apache 2 license, so use it. You can give back to the community. There's no requirement for it. Um, you can use it commercially. You can use it for research. Uh, you can use it as a simulator. So if you're CPO, uh, you want to work. With, uh, you want something to simulate a charging station during development. Everest is perfect for that. Um, it runs on embedded Linux, so we do need Linux to run it on a charging station. Um, it's it's a modern, moderate, uh, it's a modern um, microservices architecture, so you can easily uh, use the modules that you need. Uh, it's not required to use the full stack. You can just use uh, modules that would fit your use case. Um, we implement all the relevant protocols, uh, so OCP 16201, probably starting to work on 21 in the next weeks. Um, DIN spec 1511.8, uh, the US versions of that. Uh, we're currently actively um, working with the, Shadebo, uh, the GBT guys in China to also get that implemented in Everest. Um, and also working on getting energy management protocols in like EEBUS, OpenADR. Um, so anything you would ever need on a protocol in a charging station, that's part of Everest. Um, yeah, it's C++. You can build uh, code in Rust as well. You could do Python, uh, you could do JavaScript. We don't advise that to, for production, but you will see a lot of Python and JavaScript code for testing uh, purposes also in, uh, inside Everest. Um, yeah, if you do a modern uh, charging station, you need certificates. And you need a lot of certificates to secure your charging station. Um, I think the biggest one everybody knows is 1518. If you want to do plug and charge, entire plug and charge PKI infrastructure, is based on certificates. You need to be able to validate these certificates. You need to be able to store the root certificates. Um, the connection, especially with Dash 20, the connection between the EV and the charging station is required to be TLS 1.3. That requires you to have the right certificates in place as well. Um, if you go for OSPP, OSPP now, it's not a hard requirement, but more and more we see that TLS starts to become a requirement there. So you need a certificate to be able to set up a secure connection to the back end so you, you can prevent somebody from um, imitating a charging station so you get a real charge station. You as a CPO know for sure that this is a real charging station that you commissioned that talks to your back end. Um, if you do a firmware update, those firmware updates need to be signed. Those signed are signed by certificates, so a lot of certificates are needed. Um, OSPP is used to manage all these certificates installing root certificates, sub-CA certificates, leave certificates. Uh, OSPP is responsible do, for doing the certificate signing request. So if a new client certificate is needed, all of that is done over OSPP. Uh, and OSPP is also responsible for the um, validation of the contract certificates uh, for, that are needed for 1518. So es especially OSPP requires a lot of access to all the certificates inside the charging station. There's different ways of storing this. Now, the best way to do that is a TPM. Um, so for the people not familiar with that, you can 
if you build a charging station, there's a, con there's a physical component that is put on the PCB that stores certificates. You can't read from it. You can't read the real private keys. That thing is really built by the Trusted Computing Group to make a secure storage for your certificates. And it can do a lot more on securing the firmware and also securing the boot sequence of a charging station. Um, and this is the key thing that secures all of your mobile phones, secures all of your PCs and laptops. Um, and this is also something that is important in the charging station to secure your charging station. So if you build a charging station, I would strongly advise to use the TPM. So also for Everest, for us, this is like the thing that we focus on getting this TPM working and correctly working. Um, we're working with the Trusted Computing Group. Um, we also want them to review the thing that we do, talking to the TPM module to make sure that we're not making mistakes. That's all the way to store the stuff. Um, things like root, uh, root certificates you can store in the file system. Those are publicly anyhow. Um, we do uh, have first implementations where we did just store the private keys also on a file system. TPM wasn't there. Works. It's not the most secure version. But if we build something that sh works with all the certificates in, a, in Everest, we need to support all these different options to store stuff. So we did the first version of an implementation. Um, this is a quick. So as I said, we have a microservices architecture. So we have an MQTT bus in Everest. We have the Everest Framework Manager. That's responsible for starting, stopping the, the modules, uh, making sure they still live. And then we have all the different modules. Now, this is a subset of the modules. These are the modules that are directly related to OCP, the main OCP module, a module that does a lot of system stuff. Um, if you send a reboot to OCP, something needs to pick that up and do the reset of the charging station. That's the system module. It's also responsible for firmware updates. We have an authentication module. If you swipe your RFID, if you use plug and charge, the authentication module is responsible for checking the authentication. So these three combined are really the OCP related modules. On the EV communication, we have more, but the two most important ones involved here are the EVZ manager. That's the main state machine that does all the 15 and 8 stuff. And we have the EVZ Slack module. Now, we did in LIP OSPP is a separate module. So we have an OSPP module and we have LIP OSPP. Why is that separated? Somebody wants to build a charging station and says, yeah, I don't want to go full in on Everest yet. But I really love the OSPP implementation of Everest. It does OSPP 1.6, it does 2.0.1. You could reuse LIP OSPP. We have customers that are using LIP OSPP with their other firmware. It is an option. It's probably easier to just get Everest up and running, but if you do really want. Um, so LIP OSPP requires this LIP security. And the EFZ manager required LIP security. So we got that up and running. Worked with the file system, the first version. Uh, we tried to get the DPM up and running. And then we hit a slack. The problem is that the TPM module is not multi-threaded. Only one process can talk to it. And it could happen at a certain point that the 1508 uh, module needed access to the TPM. We had two instances of lib security talking to the same TPM module. Uh, um, you could have a threading problem where the lib OCP would also talk to the TPM module. So back to the dorm board. We needed a way to prevent um, certificate handling um, to, to prevent that multi-threading uh, problem. Now, Everest works with an MQTT bus. That's perfect. Put something on the MQTT bus, it's picked up, you solve the threading problem. Um, we needed the TPM, so we needed uh, different um, OpenSSL providers. Um, for people not that familiar, OpenSSL is a library you use for security communication. The providers give you ways to implement uh, the TLS certificates either towards a TPM or to a different way of storing these things and processing them. Um, ideally, we want to have that library work outside Everest. Um, we have that lib OSPP. Um, people are using that, so we also need a security module that would work with lib OSPP or lib ISO outside uh, Everest. Um, and we wanted to implement everything that is needed for an EVSE, so for a charging station, in that same module. So we had as much of the functionality um, that would, would ever need with OCP. So I have one module that has also most of the knowledge of the way those certificates need to be used. Um, oh, already mentioned the. So we need support for different. Um, I, I had this one. That's the providers. Um, so we came up with a new architecture where we have a 
we really built a Everest module. So it's a module that implements the new lib EVC security. That starts to op open SSL and uh, depending on which what you do, a certain provider that you might need. Um, this solves the threading problem because it will only get messages from MQTT coming in. Um, lib AVZ is, is still standalone, so you can use lib OCP outside, and EVZ security is just a wrapper around uh, that security module. So, wh what did we add to lib EVZ? So, it does all the certificate handling. If you need a certificate signing request, um, you can just ask it, it will generate a certificate signing request for you, and you can send that over OSPP um, towards the CPO to the back end. Um, you can ins basically manage all the certificates, you can get them, you can install them, you can delete them, uh, you can check if they're expired or still uh, valid. Um, you can update the leaf certificate, so if you get a leaf certificate but you need a full chain, uh, there's a command in there where you can just say, hey, I have this leaf certificate, please complete this leaf certificate. So it will go to the cloud, um, get the root certificates, get the sub CA certificates, put them all in the same uh, certificate and then store that in an updated certificate. Um, some systems you need the full chain, you can't work with just the leave certificate alone. Um, it does all the OSCP handling. Um, it can work with pen files, you can have pen files on your file system loaded into the module um, to update stuff. Um, and it has a garbage collection. So every now and then you can just call it, it will clean up existing certificates that are now outdated so they don't clog up your system on the long run. So how do we use this in now in Everest and in the new architecture? So between, it's not really between, it's microservices. But so there's one new module that talks both to the OCP related modules and to uh, the EVZ related modules. Um, we have a new, this is also changed because all the 1508 stuff was in the EVZ manager before, that's now moved out. So we have an, an ISO 1508 module that's basically also a wrapper around the ISO 1598 library. This library also means you can use it outside Everest. And this now to needs that libavc security. We've done the same at, at OSPP. You do see it has a, some calls still directly to libavc security. Mm, there's some static functions in there that it was kind of useless to put them on the MQTT bus um, to get that done. You can just directly call those static functions. They don't really do that much on the TPM. Uh, they just validate stuff. And so it was easier to implement it this way. So architectural-wise, not the nicest solution, but it works. Uh, now, if we then go to a real, real-world use case, charging station starts up. Um, the first thing that's happened is the OSPP module installs uh, the root certificates, installs the SECC leave certificates, and generates a certificate signing request. That's just a start of procedure. Now, then we're running. Um, we get a plug and charge session. The 15.8 module um, gets the um, SECC certificate, uh, either from the, um, from the cache or it does a request from the EVC security ma uh, module. Then it has that contract, sends it to the EVZ manager. The EVZ manager says, I have a contract, I need to validate that this is a valid contract. As I told you, the old manager is responsible. So the old manager gets that certificate uh, handed over. It says, hey, I have a certificate here, I can't authenticate this because this is a MO certificate that I don't own. I need to ask my CPO, okay, who's responsible for that? That's the OSPP module. It sends the uh, token to the OSPP module that will send it over to the uh, CPMS. That will get validated, comes back, says, oh, this is valid. Authentication module says, okay, authorized. Uh, we get an authorization response and we can start charging. So it involves quite some modules, um, but it's also very uh, separation of concerns so we can easily uh, update uh, things or modernize them. Um, is it done, our lib EVZ security? Um, not yet. Um, we've, we've implemented 15.8-2. We are working on dash 20, and one of the things that we need is a way to select the right um, leaf certificate. With EVs now ha having the capability of multiple root certificate, means we need a selection to find the correct leaf certificate. Um, 
Next to that, also the OSCP uh, re response data. So we can send out the OSCP uh, request. Uh, what is still missing is we're not processing the data yet. So it's like a small step that we still need to do to wrap it up. Um, but OSCP is also not used that much yet. But we things to do. P probably will happen in the, this month. Yeah, September already. Yeah. End of the month should probably be implemented. Um, now. You don't want to use Everest yet. You have your own charge station, but you do like the idea of having one module that is also checked by the, op the open source community, security researchers. You can use a standalone. Um, it is written in C++17, so you need to be able to compile that in your um, build pipeline. And you need to uh, link that as well. So where we have a wrapper um, to talk to the Everest framework, you will need your own custom code uh, to talk to the EVC security module. It has an HPP an HPPP file, so you know which functions you can call. Um, it's not that hard. Uh, do keep in mind, because we took care of that, only call it from a singleton. So make sure you don't have threading problems, because the lib EVC security doesn't solve your threading for you. That is something you need to do when calling the module. Do it. I do see. Um, yeah, so that was it for me. I hope this was useful. Um, we are part of the Linux Foundation Energy. Linux Foundation Energy is getting a bit bigger. And we, what we just started last week is a special interest group for EV charging. So we're trying to get all the open source projects in the EV charging space within one special group. Um, we're tr probably going to meet once a month. Um, if you want to join, there's a QR code here. Join the mailing list. Uh, we will send an invite probably in the next week, next two weeks for the next call. Um, if you have some open source software that you worked on, please join. Doesn't all have to be inside the Linux Foundation. We just want to get as many of the open source projects to work together, try to align, learn where we can reuse stuff. Um, yeah, you want to learn more about Everest? Um, our booth is over there. Come talk to us. Thank you. Robert, maybe we'd like to. You'd like to open up for questions and. Uh... Yep. Yeah. Does somebody have a question? Too, too technical for a lot of people, maybe? I bet not. No? Then, hey, thanks all for your attention, and I uh, hope to see you in the, the EV Charging SIG uh, working group. Thank you very much, Robert. <laughs>